I appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, come here to share with you uh, my thoughts on language education for uh, minorities in China and uh, on ethnicity in China. Uh, my uh, topic will be uh, about the uh, larger picture of uh, minority language education in China. Uh, within this picture, we'll uh, see how uh, we can understand uh, specifically about uh, mother tongue education for Tibetans. So my topic today is uh, changing models of nation state building, linguistic diversity and language harmony in contemporary China. Linguistic diversity has been a topic for a long while and language harmony is uh, a new topic which the Chinese government brought up uh, a few, two years ago. In uh, November 2007, uh, the Ministry of Education and the uh, State Commission on Ethnic Affairs had an international symposium in Beijing focusing on language harmony. Uh, so I think that's something very interesting and we want to look into this. Let me give you an overview of my talk. First, I will uh, give an introduction about this topic, and then I'll look at uh, the situation in China from uh, a conceptual framework I proposed a few years ago uh, about multilingualism as an ideology and language order. And then I will look into how China changed its models for nation state building uh, since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And then lastly, I'll see how uh, within this framework, uh, balance between linguistic diversity and language harmony can be sought. Uh, my first question is, uh, has China changed its language policy for minorities since the uh, 90s? Um, Probably uh, most of you already have the answers. There are changes. So the question is, why has it changed the policy? And in what ways uh, the policy has been changed? And of course, more specifically, how has this change been, uh, uh, how has this change affected minor minority language education Modern tongue education in uh, minority communities, uh, or more specifically in Tibetan communities. And I will look into this in the two, uh, from two perspectives. That is, multilingualism as an ideology and an or language order. And also, the, how the change of nation state building model has affected uh, the language policy. First, I would like to talk about multilingualism as an ideology. And this is a conceptual framework for us to look into multilingualism. Almost all the societies in today's world are actually multilingual. Monolingual societies are I think, to a large extent, a myth. So if you look into the situation here in New York City, uh, or any cities in the US, even small towns, uh, you find actually uh, the society, uh, to some extent, is bilingual or multilingual. In the past, people most look into multilingualism as a uh, reality, as linguistic ability, or as language uh, proficiency. <clears throat> so actually, when we talk about multilingualism, it's more than that. So first, there's some ideology when we talk about multilingualism. And second, in any multilingual society, actually, the relationship between languages are ordered. So that's uh, 
So when I talk, I say multilingualism actually is a language ideology. Here, ideology, when I define ideology, I follow the uh, Marxist tradition. So language ideology is a system of <laughs> beliefs, presuppositions, ideas about what the relationships among languages should be in a society. And of course, language ideology as a superstructure. It has certain relationship with the reality. So uh, it's, a, it's an echo of the re linguistic reality. It also interacts with the linguistic uh, reality. So I think this is very important because we're going to see how the communities, how states uh, employ or deploy uh, these ideologies. So generally speaking, I think there are two conflict types of ideologies about multilingualism or about monolingualism. So the first idea is uh, monolingualism. So this idea is basically based on the uh, assumption that one nation <coughs> is built on one common language. This idea has been dominated for a long time. Uh, China was obsessed with this idea since the beginning of the 20th century about building one language for one strong nation. So when you have this kind of ideology, you uh, see multilingualism, either the ideology or the, the uh, reality, as threats, as problems. <laughs> So language planning for a long time has been uh, trying to find solutions to solve these multilingual problems. And of course, the other extreme of the ideology is multilingualism. Uh, for this ideology, uh, people believe, who believe or who practice this ideology believes that this one nation with one language is simply a myth is created for the need of monolingualism. It's not a reality. And more importantly, this ideology believes that multilingualism as a social reality is uh, uh, <coughs> about rights, about rights for the native speakers, and it's also uh, about resources. So multilingualism are uh, actually are resources for the native communities, and more importantly, which many states don't realize, they're also resources for the states. That's very important. 